I am here to give you the Sweet Vicious TV review! Oh my god. You know how fucking long I had to wait for these episodes to come back? Wasn't that long. I'm just being dramatic. But holy shit, y'all. Tonight's episode changed everything. You know how shows tell you, oh, tonight will change everything? Well, it did, bitch. I took some notes. And here we go. So, the episode opens with O running and Jay stopping her to give her clothes. So, if you watched the last episode, you know that Ophelia went after the guy who was the driver who was raping girls in a car with his friend. So, she went after him, threw a knife, stabbed him in the leg. He was like, you don't want in trouble now. And everybody was Snapchatting it and shit. So, Ophelia is running away from that. And Jay, like, you know, strong arms the shit out of her since they're flying against the wall. And then she has to change her clothes. We notice in that moment that Ophelia has this big ass cut on her arm and how Jules is freaking the fuck out about it, but Ophelia's like, oh, okay. So then they get an alert on their phones warning them of somebody on campus and how they need to get indoors and be out of the way because we're going on lockdown. So then <clears throat> Oh, not Ophelia, but Jules keeps telling her about this cut and how she needs to not think it's no big deal because people can zoom into videos and see the shit that's on you. So then Harris comes up to the apartment because he's like, "How? when did y'all get here? Y'all heard about what's happening. We on lockdown. And so Jules leaves to go see Tyler and Harris proceeds to tell Ophelia that he thinks that Jules is the vigilante. And O tells him, of course, there's no way. She's like, Damon Avery? Because Harris brings up one of the guy's names and he goes, that guy is massive. Do you honestly think sweet cookie baking? Oh, rats. Jules would actually do something like that. I mean, Harris gonna keep snooping. He gonna find something out. So then, Jules notices while they're all downstairs in the record store, her, Tyler, Ophelia, and Harris, Jules notices that the cops are stopping people and checking their left arms because in that video they noticed that the person's arm was cut. And, you know, I'd freak the fuck out. First of all, where the fuck you get off touching my body parts? I don't want to show you my arm. I don't have to. It's in the Constitution. I don't have to. I'm real fucking dramatic like that, y'all. I would have made a scene, okay? So then, Barton, we go to a clip of Barton going to the dean with his theory that there's a vigilante and that the vigilante is targeting boys who have all been reported for being rapists and sexually assaulting women. So what I thought about this scene was the fact that... <sighs> This ain't gonna get done the way Barton wanted to. And I even predicted earlier in the episode, something gonna happen to Barton. Cause you don't bring to the Dean, oh, all of these women have been raped on campus and y'all ain't did shit about it. So we think somebody fucking them up. You don't bring that to a Dean whose son is one of the motherfuckers and actually think he's gonna do the right thing. He wasn't. Duh. So then, oh... Ophelia makes a plan to run through the store as the vigilante to get Harris off of Jules' case and to keep the cops preoccupied while they're looking for arms to check and shit like that. Because they have to think of what they're going to do with this whole she has a cut on her arm, they're looking for the vigilante, there's cops everywhere, like what the fuck are we going to do? Harris is getting closer to figuring out it's Jules, except the cops don't know there's two of them, so Ophelia comes up with this plan that she's going to run through the store in her vigilante costume, making Harris believe that it clearly can't be Jules, because Jules is going to be there too, she's going to call 911, it's going to be a thing. Alright, I think it's a really good plan, I think it could work. So, then Kennedy calls Jules while Jules is in the record store and asks her where her speakers is. And then she notices that Jules' steps book is under her bed. Now, if you remember in the last episode when she was about to leave the house with Ophelia, Jules didn't shove the books all the way under. So, Kennedy proceeds to ask her, how's that stats study thing going? You know, the book with a doodle of us in it. Oh, yeah, I'm staring at it right now. She done call her bitch in a lie, y'all. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So then she go downstairs, and the fucking girls are like, Oh, yeah, well, you know, Jules has been gone a lot. Oh, and Harris told me that she lied about where Ophelia got the necklace. She found it in the alley where so-and-so was attacked. Oh, my God, what? So then... <coughs> 
Ju not Jules. Ophelia says she's gonna go upstairs and take a shower, and then just like that, they get a knock on the door, and it's Nate. The only reason Nate is over there, because his creepy ass was at the pizza shop, saw that Jules was happy across the street, and he had to go be fucking nosy. I'm so fucking sick of Nate. I'm going to need somebody beat the shit out of Nate. Like, he is getting on my nerves. You got a girlfriend. One. What the fuck makes you think that Jules actually wants to hang out with you? And three, she got a man with her. So what the fuck is the point of you coming over here? Ugh, Nate is annoying. So... His bullshit response was, well, I wanted to see if you were okay. No, you didn't. You just want to see Tyler in person. <sighs> Nate corners Jules and starts to lightweight flirt. Because he's like, I just wanted to see if you were okay. You know, maybe we could. Why are you touching on me? Why are you touching on me? Ugh. While Kennedy is finding out that Jay lied about the necklace, which I just told you guys. So... O gets ready for the vigilante business that they about to do. Because they decide they're not going to stop the plan just because Nate's ass showed up. If anything, it kind of helps. There's more people to see it. So, O gets ready. She goes into the record store, cuts the lights, and then starts to run through. Harris stands in front of the door screaming no, and she whips her stick out, knocks the shit into his leg, flips over him, and then goes outside of the store. She sees four cops. And she starts to book it. That was the best fucking scene of homegirl just running. And the zoom in of her eyes and the black man. It was so sick. Fucking loved it. But I kind of felt bad for Harris that Ophelia just knocked the shit out of him. And he don't even know it's Ophelia. First of all, why are you being Captain Say of a hole and you gonna stand in front of the door? This person got a baton. They been fucking boys up all around campus, but you wanna stand in front like you gonna do something, Harris. Boy, if you don't get behind that counter and duck like a normal person. Oh my god. So <coughs> Jules. <coughs> Shit, okay. So during the chase, when we get back to it, Ophelia jumps over a police car and she is booking it like she is really committing to this. And <clears throat> Jules calls 911 to make it believable that, oh my god, I'm so scared. So Ophelia runs, okay, to one of the guys that they fucked up house. It was that boy from the episode where we learned that this man is using his car service to rape girls as his little friend. She goes in there, cuts his arm, puts a band-aid on it so it make it look believable, leaves a black jacket there, fucks him up, and gets the fuck out. So then when the cops get there, they think it's him and they cuff him. Woohoo! Blaming people for the shit you do. Uh, but he was doing bad things anyway, so do we really give a shit that he was falsely accused? No. We don't. So, <clears throat> When O goes back into her window, because she acted like she was taking a shower, she comes out, everybody's sitting in the living room, Harris is holding ice cream against his knee, he's like, I'm alright though, and Ophelia acts like she's gonna cry because she knows she did it, and so they all decide to go downstairs, wait, the one moment that Nate was actually funny, you know, was when she goes, why are all y'all in my apartment, and they're all saying their reasons, and then Nate goes, I just, I wanted to see if you had those snacks that you were talking about. I was like, boy, if you get the fuck out of my apartment, I ain't got no snacks. Yeah, I smoke a lot of weed, but I ain't got snacks. <sighs> it's a lie. I totally have snacks. Anyway, <laughs> but so everybody leaves except for Jules and Tyler. And Jules and Tyler stay in O's room where, you know, they get ready to do the do. Jules is like, yeah. And Tyler's all like, are you sure? And Jules is like, yeah. And so they're looking for condoms. And then, of course, Ophelia, being Ophelia, has a casket of condoms by her bed. Could she get any fucking cooler? Like, I thought that shit was funny. They opened it, and it was just a shit ton of condoms. And Ty was like, Jesus. Oh, and I know <coughs> we're supposed to be focusing on how hot it is that they're making out and everything, but all I could focus on was how cute Jules' bra was. Like, if the show creator sees this video or Liza Bennett, I need to know where that bra lit was, because that shit was cute. I was like, oh my God. And my mom's watching it with me and she's like, Tyler, you're focusing on the wrong things. I was like, I know, but her bralette is so cute. Where did she get it? That's where my head went. But during this scene while they're kissing and hugging and all that, 
N not Nate, but Tyler lifts up and Jules sees Nate face and so she kicks the shit out of Tyler and kicks him off of her and he falls off the bed and he's like, are you okay? And she's rushing to put her top on and she's like, it's not you, it's me. And he's like, well, let's stay and talk. And she leave him and he looked like he about to cry. Oh, poor Tyler. He thought he was going to get some ass and... <sighs> Not poor Tyler because he thought he was going to get some ass. Poor Tyler because he looked like he was going to cry. Like he felt bad. Oh, poor thing. So then Jay goes downstairs and confronts Nate about raping her. I thought that scene was so not only well done, but amazing. Eliza Bennett's acting in that scene was off the fucking charts. Like, why wasn't she nominated for a Golden Globe? Because that shit was amazing. She pushes him against the wall and puts her arm against his neck and puts her hand over his mouth and goes, you did this to me. And she has this whole speech, but one part I loved in the speech the most when she says, you don't have to carry this around. And I hate you for it. But I also envy you for it. That he doesn't have to wake up every day and deal with the anxiety and the post-traumatic stress disorder of him raping her like she do. And I love that she just let his ass know real quick. Motherfucker, I hate you. I don't feel safe around you. That wasn't sex. You raped me and you ain't shit. In a very more eloquent way. Because not a lot of women get that moment. And even though I'll never get that moment... Or was close to having it and just didn't feel the need to take it. A lot of women are either too scared to confront their attackers or never get a chance to confront their attackers or just aren't in the headspace too. And so I love because they put that on TV and show that there's nothing wrong with you not only confronting these motherfuckers, but it'll make you feel good. And that there are women out here who do have the strength to do it and we here for you and shit. Because we listen and we care. I know that sounds like really sarcastic, but it's, it's just the way I sound when I say things. But I really appreciated that scene because I'll never get that moment. I'll never be able to confront my sexual assaulters. So I liked watching that on TV. So then <clears throat> after that whole scene, Nate leaves. Tyler comes downstairs and see her crying. You know what I don't understand? You see a girl crying. You see her extremely upset and you see this motherfucker leave out the back door. The first thought to me would be to go yell at Nate. What the fuck did you do to my girlfriend? Or go come for my girlfriend and go, what did he do to you? Like, he just stood there looking like a dumbass. Come on, Tyler. Get it together. So... After she confronted him, her and O go upstairs and have a talk. And so she says it's finally time for her to tell Kennedy. So then we shoot to Barton in his office and Barton gets fired by the dean. I have two theories on why he got fired. One, because he got too close to the truth. And another theory is because the dean saw his son's name on that list of rapists and didn't want this shit to become like a bigger national thing. So you fire the person who's closest to the story. Y'all ain't shit. So then we shoot back to the record store where Jules breaks up with Tyler. Oh my God. My mouth dropped. Like, I felt like I was being broken up with. Not because my name is Tyler, too, but holy shit. That was, oh, God, it was brutal. Especially when he was like, let me in. Let me be there for you. And she's like, I can't. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. oh. it's too much. It's too much. So then we shoot to a scene of Nate going over to the sorority because he has to talk to Kennedy with these little bullshit crocodile tears in his eyes. Little bitch. So, Jay goes back to the sorority because she earlier told Ophelia that she's going to tell Kennedy everything. And so then Kennedy opens the door and she's like, there's something I need to tell you. And Kennedy's like, don't bother. Nate just left. How could you? How could you have sex with him? How could you do that to me? I thought you were my best friend. And Jules was like, what did he tell you? No, I didn't want it. He wouldn't stop. And she tells her, he raped me. And then Kennedy's like, I don't understand. First of all, Kennedy, if my friend just said to me the phrase, 
your boyfriend raped me a long time ago and I wanted to tell you, we're not about to have a moment where we're still standing in the hallway staring at each other. We gonna sit down and I'm gonna be like, give me the blow by blow. I know I don't wanna hear it and I know I'm not gonna like it, but just tell me everything that happened. My immediate reaction wouldn't be to shut down and then tell my friends all the things that they're doing that's fucked up in our friendship. Now is not the time for that. Your friend just dropped a bomb on you. Maybe, just maybe, you comfort them I don't know. You don't react like that, but my mama told me a lot of women probably react like that. So, and so Kennedy proceeds to tell Jules that she doesn't know if she can believe her because she lies about where she's going. She lies about what she's doing. So she doesn't know if she can really trust Jules and how they're not the same people they were anymore and how she's right. Everything has changed. And basically it seems like she's ending their friendship right there. And she shuts the door. She's crying. Jules is crying. Then we shoot to Barton she's looking through the files in his office of all the cases where girls have been sexually assaulted and raped. And he's reading through and reading through. And he noticed, I saw his name on the wall at, I think it said Jocelyn Hall. Yeah, so Barton goes there and he finds the rape wall. He finds it. He sees all their names, the stay away from Kappa Cap. I mean, chow, it's a revelation that makes you go, oh. <gasps> And then he calls Harris and goes, I think there's something you need to see. Bitch. Okay. So, then we shoot to Ophelia opening the door of her apartment and Jules standing there with her bags crying and saying, can I stay with you for a little bit? Oh. I mean, oh. I love how Ophelia's just like, yeah, and just hugs her and she's crying and it's just the sweetest moment. But, oh my God. The fucking previews to next week. The past will be revealed. They're giving us the whole thing that happened between Jules and Nate. Like that, I don't think I'm ready. But yeah, this episode was very powerful. It was very deep. I love because they constantly play the It's On Us commercials and let you know that it is on us. When you see something, step up, say something. But I think this show is headed in a great direction. And I personally feel like a show like this should be nominated for awards because they're doing something that sometimes is uncomfortable, the conversations to have when it comes to sexual assault and rape on college campuses. So I think this show needs way more recognition than it's getting. Like, you all need to be watching Sweet Vicious. Like, it touches me so deep. And I just love this show. And yeah, it's, it's good. And we need to watch it and learn things and really listen to our friends and the people around us when things happen to them. I don't give a shit if he's your boyfriend or your best friend. If someone says something and you, you feel like there's some truth to it or you need to listen to them, do it, you know? But yeah, this was my review for the Sweet Vicious episode. It was so good. It was so insane. It was so emotional. I cried so much. And then I watched it again today so I could take the notes. So I've seen that episode twice. So I'm emotionally wrecked. So I probably need to go eat a donut to make myself feel better. But anywho, I hope you guys love this review. I hope you're watching this show and you're just as into it as I am. And like I say at the end of every video, if no one's told you that you're awesome and that they love you, I think you're awesome and I love you. See you on Face Mask Friday. Peace.